In front of me, I've got a lot of cool pieces laid out that we're gonna be installing on Ryan's Jeep today. And if you don't know what they are, these are made by Armor Light. This is their complete waterproof system for the two-door 2024 Wrangler. If you have a two-door Wrangler, this is gonna be the perfect solution if you take the top and doors off, which Ryan's kind of crazy and takes them off even when it's like 40 degrees out. And Ryan actually got it in the desert tan color. This is gonna waterproof his flooring, make it super durable, and give it a cool khaki color on the floor there. So I think that's gonna be a little bit unique. Now this is the two-door JL installation we do have my full four-door kit laying over there but we figured we'd break it up into two videos to show you some tips and tricks because both of them are a little bit different well, we're in Ryan's Jeep here, and as you can tell, we've already got the seats removed. So four bolts and a wiring connector we decided to pull off. Now we did disconnect the battery, and this is not a necessary step of this installation, but we figured to show you guys on camera how easy it is to do this, we'd go ahead and remove the seats so we can get some better shots. Now Ryan always takes the top and doors off, and even when it's raining, he keeps them off. So he'll throw just the like safari top on like this, but with that, you still get water in the vehicle. I was already looking at Ryan's passenger side. You can kind of see under the seat there and near the center console, you can see the mildew that's built up over there. Now what happens is there's sediment, there's all sorts of junk in the rainwater when it rains, it'll dry up, but then it kind of makes your carpet like hard and leaves everything at the top. That's not very good. And then when you go to put all your top and doors back on, it kind of stinks inside your Jeep too. So with this, the armor light is gonna be fully mold and mildew resistant. It's gonna be completely waterproof just about on the interior of this Jeep. And that way, when we do get some mud, some nasty stuff in here, you can hose it out, it'll go out the drain plugs and you'll be good to go. Like I said, we did remove the seat, so don't think that you need to do that. You do, I believe, just remove the four bolts so you can move your seat around. And if you're gonna remove the seats, well, I'd recommend a professional or you disconnect your battery, but you don't need to. So that's just an extra step we took just to show you how to film. So as per the armor light instructions, in the instructions it actually says, how would you feel if you were in a box for that long and didn't get to stretch out? Put your armor light flooring out in the sun like this. It's a nice sunny day here and it helps things just ease up and loosen up a little bit. It's the same when you put a soft top on, let it out in the sun a little bit. It makes it a little bit more flexible and malleable. I would not be doing this if it was like 20 degrees out because everything does get stiff in the cold. So it would definitely get a little bit stiffer. The flooring would be harder to pull out. And then I am wearing gloves. Some people are always like, why do you wear gloves? The plastics in these JLs, Ryan, how many times have you seen me chop up my hands? Bleeding a lot Dude, lately. it is everything. And I mean, the plastics in here, the finish is just not what it used to be. You reach your hand under things and it's like slice and dice underneath there. Now we wanna pull off this kick panel as well as our B pillar trim. But to do that, we're gonna pop the cap off up front disconnect our door harness and remove the 10 millimeter nut that's right here. So there's a 10 millimeter nut and then we'll be able to pop this entire piece of plastic off. Got our 10 on our impact, which is probably gonna strip the heck out of this, but it's Ryan's Jeep, so we're learning. No, it didn't. And I'm just gonna put everything in the cup holder too, so we save it. So that's removed there. Now we can go ahead and start to pull this off. Pop your little connector off. That's a push pin there. And that'll come out just like so. We'll let this bake in the sun a little bit too and then Ryan, maybe you can hose this off. We can clean this too while it's out. You don't really have as access to get this. I think we have to pop this off here. Yeah, we're gonna pop that right off. Get our B-pillar trim. We don't need to remove the seat belt. Okay, pull your B-pillar off and that'll just come right out. That's why we pulled that cap off so we can get the lower rubberized end here. You do not need to pull your seatbelt off. So leave that there. One thing you wanna to check too while you're doing this, make sure all your hardware either stays in place or if it's left on a connector like these white ones here, we're gonna go put it back on our factory panel. We're gonna repeat this process over on the passenger side and then we'll show you how to remove the center console or at least loosen it up. We're only like five minutes in. This is gonna be pretty simple to get done. We got the passenger side a pillar and B pillar trim removed. Now we need to remove our center console safety covers here. So these are the covers that cover up the bolts that hold this into place. We're gonna go ahead and use a trim panel removal tool, pop under here, pull it out. And then there's a 10 millimeter hiding underneath there. So we'll pull this one off. Set that in our cup holder. And then there's one more right up front. So there's one right here, right up front. Do the same thing. Pop the cap off, set that in there as well, and pull the 10. 
Now we should be pretty loose, yeah. So we're pretty loosey-goosey in here. And then we can just give this a little bit of a pull up. So you see that, we Ryan? We already did the other side. We already did the other side, yeah. So see how we're kind of pulling that up a little bit? That's gonna help us here in the future when we pull the carpet and put the new armor light in. So that's why we did that. We don't have to remove this fully, but yeah, look at how much I can pull that up. So we're gonna pop this tab off. This is our second row carpeting. Just tuck that back a little bit. The wiring is gonna pop out just to the side of our rear passenger vent. So we wanna leave that there. And this is why we we pulled that off. So there is a push pin right here. Pull that as well. I think it should just pull right towards me then. We can see how, maybe there's one, oh, there's one more back up here, I think. Yeah, there's one more little push pin. So there's two on the side. Oh God, look at all this dirt. Look at all that. That's where the floor mats protect. And then you still got all that dirt on your yeah. carpet. It just gets kind of bedded in, dog hair, junk. So we're gonna pull this out. And probably throw it promptly in the trash can. But we're gonna pull this out, repeat the same process on the passenger side. Yeah, so when you pull out the flooring like this, yeah, you can, you can vacuum this all the time, but you still get all this crap in here. And it's not waterproof. Like, that's a big benefit of this new flooring is it's completely waterproof. This is not, look at how thin that is compared to the stuff we're gonna be putting on. We'll put a side by side, but like, then this gets wet and you get mildew, you get mold, you get stuff that hangs up underneath the seat here. And I'll let you get a detail of this. There's a little warning sign that even says, hot to the touch right here by your trans tunnel. So it's getting heat and our new armor like kit is actually has thermal reduction in it. So when you're driving around, it's gonna be cooler in your Jeep when you have the top and doors off. Cause you guys know that sun bakes off of the, uh, bakes off of the highway, bakes off of the streets and it just absorbs right into this. Look at all this foam, look at this. Look at all this. Look at, they got like crazy over here. Look at these little squigglies, Ryan. They just, wait, what, left on there? What is it, food? No, it's like foam. Ah. Quality control right here. See, there you go. It's all a souvenir for you. Look at all of it. It's like SpaghettiOs. Were you eating? I was eating. Look at all of them. Okay, so once you get that front removed, we're gonna pull our little cargo cover over. Check out what Ryan has hiding in there first. That I think we do need to reinstall just this little cargo cover. But yeah, look, you're, even your bolts here are rusty and you got some water and rust in there because this Jeep's like, you just let it out in the rain and stuff all the time. But yeah, so this rear carpet, you have to pull that off first and we're just gonna work it from the front and pull it all as one piece back. So we're gonna pop, there's a pin here. And that side kind of pulled off and push back and then we'll go around to the passenger side let's get all your foam out of here and on the floor all right here's the mildew I wonder what's under here yeah I'll pop this one off for the side panel you got a stink bug in here too Ryan right here it is still alive all right, Ryan, you can just go ahead and pull this right back towards you and right out of the vehicle. Yeah, you got a lot of foam under here. What is this? Look at all this junk. You got red tape. But we'll need to clean, we'll clean this up a little bit with a shop vac. So these are where the drain plugs are on the two door. They're right next to the center console. You just pull that out like so. And this is why we got our center console loose so we can pull the new flooring underneath this so we got some room. But now the last two pieces we need to remove are right here and right over there. So when you're ordering your armor light flooring, make sure if you have a subwoofer, you let them know there's an option for the subwoofer because Ryan doesn't have it over there. And you see the carpeting is all different. You'd have the giant subwoofer, especially on a four door, but. does go up in there pretty good. So we're gonna pop the caps off here and remove the T40 that hold on these cargo straps. All you need is a trim removal tool and a T40 Torx bit. So we'll get those popped off. And we're gonna set these aside, but you can see kinda how the carpet was tucked under here. Ryan, you can really see it right here as well. The carpet was tucked under there. Yeah. So we need to get that off because we have to make sure that all of our new armor light, which is a little bit thicker, will fit under. Now that should be simple. Yeah, see, there you go. So this piece gets removed 
and yeet it into the scrap pile. This is just one little push pin, and then we run it through here. Pull it down, and it pops right out. So that's really easy to get that removed. The thing we just have to be considerate of is we're gonna have to get the armor light under here, so I'm probably just gonna give this a little, little pull here. And I'm gonna take this off. Like that random fan guy doing aerating just said, I love the shop wall. He can see in while we're doing some work here. <laughs> you just never know. <clears throat> Why is this knife even come off? So one big crucial step, you do have to remove both of these 16 millimeter nuts. They're on threaded posts here, and these are your factory carpeting. So grab a 16 millimeter socket, go ahead and yank these off. Now the threaded post, you see that, Ryan? There's a little thread there sticking up. That can stay. You don't need to cut it off. It's just this section you need to remove. So this needs to be pulled off. The armor light flooring is designed to work with... Bring it over here. The armor light flooring is designed to work with that threaded standoff that is there, but these have to be removed. Well, I got everything removed here. I am just gonna take a little bit of the Lucas oil, just the speed wax to clean this up. It's got some debris underneath, and plus we don't really get access to it like this before or after this, so we're gonna have to remove that. Um, another thing I just noticed, Ryan, I think we're gonna have to pull this one off too. So here's one, I think we'll pull this, no, we don't have to pull this one off. All right, we'll, we'll double check, but I don't think we need to pull this one off. If we do, we'll go ahead and do it. But these retain the carpet in the side here. Those are for the floor mounts. But either way, I'm just gonna clean it off. Ryan, Ryan and I got some microfibers. Clean this off a little bit, and then we'll get to installing some flooring from Armorlite. All right, so we are gonna start working on the passenger side here. We got it quick detailed, but another kind of good time to announce this is we are gonna be putting some more bronze accents into this Jeep. And we're gonna be doing a lot. So the whole seats are gonna be reupholstered. We have some really crazy ideas and some old school retro vibes that are gonna be going on with this Jeep. So we're kind of excited to do that. If you guys know a good upholstery shop in Pennsylvania, my dad just hollered out that he knows a good one. So we'll see if dad knows that there's a good one around us too. But we're gonna get Ryan's seats reupholstered. And we wanna know if you guys have any experience with shops here in PA. We probably can have somebody reach out, but we've got some cool ideas for that seat. So just stay tuned. The tan will make more sense once we have that done. But either way, this is the first time I'm doing this. So the one thing we wanna be mindful for, we have our wiring plug kind of hanging up like this. This is your HVAC for the rear and then just all of our wiring. We're gonna be pretty gentle around all of that. But let's just start. I don't think there's only one way to learn. There's only one way to do it. And that's to kind of just start doing it. Oh, cool, I'll pull the trigger with that. There we go. All right, so our drain plug here, this is really what's gonna align the entire carpeting. That's what needs to align with that drain plug right there. So we got a ways to go forward. But we'll get it, we'll get it in there. There we go. This is some thick material. All right, we gotta get that tuck up under there and we'll get the console kind of picked up a little bit. gotta bring it forward a little bit and it's got to tuck under here this seems to be kind of a pinch point right under your yeah. kind of console here see that it's a little tight That's really tough lay them out in the sun okay and then the biggest thing here guys is aligning your drain hole plug so that is basically what's gonna align this whole kind of carpet setup here, is your drain hole plug. So you wanna make sure that when you're looking down, you can see right through and there's not like different borders and edges. So you kind of work around it. The front's crucial because you don't want this sliding. So once you're happy with that, we're gonna go around. We'll check out all the rest of this. Make sure we have it all tucked under like so. Get the wiring to pop out like so. Make sure it's firmly pressed. Then we can repeat the process on the other side. So over here though, we'll grab the pieces inside and I'll show you how to install one of these, Ryan. This is what's gonna clip this down into, uh, into the flooring. So they give you the OEM style clips. So we'll get that there and then might have to get that one done there too. So I probably should have done that before we put it in and struggled with it because I'm gonna have to redo it. Learning. Yeah, right. so we're learning on this one. 
So here are the two pieces you're going to use in order to snap around the carpeting and get it to snap into the OEM location. This is going to be your outer side and this will be your inner and it'll kind of snap together like that. So if you put this one under this side here and click it into place. You have to give it some force, but it can be done. So we got this installed, so we put the backside on as well. You're gonna wanna do this before you install it. So you can either do it this way, so you can do it with the backside captured in this side, or you can just take the top piece, the smaller piece, and put it on the exterior. Now this one was absolutely fun to get in, so I'm just gonna do the exterior one over on this side. On the driver's side, we'll do it while it's out of the Jeep to make it a little bit easier. Kinda helps to just use a flat hard surface and hit it with the butt end of a like rubber hammer. So you just kinda put this on a flat hard surface, hit it with the butt end, get it to snap, and that's what holds this flooring into place. The last thing we need to do is put our rubber plugs in. So these are gonna be the drain plugs with the Armor Light logo. We're gonna put it facing out like this, but these actually go through the flooring and the body. It's very important to align this perfectly with the tub below. If it's not aligned, it's not gonna work. So don't force it, it's just gotta be lined up nicely. So I'm just looking at this to make sure you can see through both, kind of adjusting it just ever so slightly. And we're gonna tap this into place like so. So we're gonna push it down as far as it'll go and same thing rubber end of a mallet here just a little bit you shouldn't have to crazy force this though you don't want to like really force this so just tapping it lightly with the rubber mallet pop our drain plug back in a little bit hard with my sticky gloves there we go this side's done we can go over and do the driver's side, which is the exact same process. Make sure you have your wiring up, and then we'll start doing the second row here. Something that you're gonna wanna do is kind of work around the edges here. So we unbolted the center console to make sure that we can actually fit the flap underneath there. And then up below your instrument panel, that gets a little bit tight. So you're gonna wanna work around the edges, pick up the center console as well. So Ryan's gonna reach out. We need a little bit of help to pick this up and get it into place. Definitely leave these out in the sun to make sure that they fit nicely because it is a very thick rubber material. So as we swapped over those front panels that actually pinch into place or go onto those studs, we got to work around the front. So as I'm doing this, I'm kind of looking up towards the front of the actual pedals, making sure that anything that shouldn't be interfering, it isn't interfering. So once we got that into place, just double check, work around all your edges and get it all into place nicely. So I'm just kind of checking underneath the gas pedal. We don't want to have any interference with that. That would not be good while you're driving but just making sure that all of this is pushed down properly. The pins are in place as well. Once you have that done, we're gonna go ahead and install the drain plug. So looking at the drain plug, this is what keeps the actual vehicle floor mats aligned. You do not wanna line these up when they're out of place. You wanna make sure that you can see right through to both of them. What I'm doing here is I'm basically tucking this down below the seatbelt mechanism. You wanna remember how everything came out with the factory carpet. Make sure you pop your wiring harness out for the actual seat. And then also have the floorboard exposed so you can put your seats back in. That's a big thing. You guys remind you, we did take out our seats. So on this, we're looking at the second row as well. So we're getting this tucked under our HVAC. Once you have the second row installed, same thing applies for the plugs. It's a lot easier on the second row here. There it is right next to each of the cup holders. We're gonna set that into place. We'll use the back end of our rubber mallet just to tap it in a little bit. And that'll give us some drainage on the rear floor. I really like this because normally you wouldn't have that drain unless you get the Mopar floor mats. And once we have that tapped into place, we'll be able to drain this and hose it out when you have backseat passengers in the two door. Really cool feature here and the black stand out nicely with the khaki. Another thing I like about these floor mats is being that they are so much thicker, they're really gonna sound dead in the interior of the vehicle. I think this Jeep's gonna be a heck of a lot quieter and I'm almost looking forward to driving it with the top and doors on, especially when we make our longer road trips. Now as we move on to the rear cargo area, this is where things get a little bit tighter. So we did actually pop out just the plastics of our cargo sides there. And you can really see the contrast here of the tan compared to the black. Now this one does have a section at the bottom that goes into the push pin, but we're gonna work this around and make sure that it goes underneath all the plastic. That is why we popped it out. Just pull the clips out a little bit and get it tucked underneath there. Once you have your Jeep kind of stripped down as far as we do, it does make easy work of it. I would recommend the gloves that I have on though, just to make sure your hands don't get completely tore up. 
This side actually went pretty easy. So Rhine does not have a subwoofer. You have to make sure when you order it, you're choosing a subwoofer or not. But we're gonna get the seatbelt in there and then we're gonna just kind of tuck it up underneath that rear plastic and also push that section where the seatbelt cuts out. We're gonna push that all the way back. That's one thing I didn't notice until I was kind of finalizing it is you want to push that section with the seatbelt all the way over the bolt but yeah just working around it pushing this over the push pin moving on to the passenger side same thing over here dad actually jumped in and was helping a little bit Ryan does not have a subwoofer. So as you can see, the wheelhouse covers that are going over this are gonna fit very precisely. So they fit very nicely. We've got the sun beating down to help loosen them up a little bit, but this is gonna give us adequate protection for the entire rear end of the vehicle. Once you have that dialed in though, just kind of look around at both sides, make sure it's all tucked in nicely. You get all the plastics clipped back in on the cargo area, just like I'm doing here. And sometimes you don't wanna mess them up because those plastic pieces can be a real bear to pull apart. But once you have that dialed in, Check a look, take a look at your seat belts, make sure everything's put away the exact way that you took it out. And then we should be ready after we get this done to install the rear cargo, the complete cover area. This is the last piece of armor light that we actually need to install. We did put this little cargo cover back on as well as these two side pieces. This does remain in the vehicle and that way you still have a cover for this, but the last armor light bit does cover the rest of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this and we'll slide it up towards Ryan somehow. And this also has notches out for, for your seats too. So on the two door, this is all cut out here for your seat brackets. So we can cut those out, but Ryan typically does run without a rear seat. So for right now, this is going to be perfect. And then when you want to flip up your cargo, you just flip this up, set this back down and you're completely covered in the back. This is a really nice addition. You don't see this too much and it completely encapsulates the whole back end here. So a really good look and kind of makes it look more finished. On today's viewer regular video, we're checking out Sam's 2012 Jeep Wrangler Sahara that he's got a lot of cool custom mods to. He said he has the, he's had this vehicle for a long time. It's very special and he'll never get rid of it. He drives, he said he'll drive it till he dies and he services it basically every week. 2012s did have some issues, but he said he's got all those worked out. Now, just looking at it, I can see he's got a set of the 17 inch Rubicon wheels, some road armor fender flares with EAG inners, a Terraflex lift kit, Falcon stabilizer, the JL style front grille, custom front and rear bumper, as well as the full interior that was done. So he's got a carbon fiber steering wheel, full leather upholstery on top of it, and it looks really, really neat underneath there. This is a two and a half inch lift on 35 inch tires for anyone that was watching this and wanted to see what size it was. But he's also got some neat things going on in the background, and you can see he has a brand new 2024 JL Rubicon in Anvil. So really cool to see both of those 12 years apart. And neat that he's keeping them both too. I have a hard time keeping both like that because I always want to drive the cooler one but really neat to see sam thank you so much for submitting if you guys want to have a chance at your rig being featured be sure to hit us up through instagram or send us an email about two hours later and we are wrapped up with the armor light install on ryan's jeep i gotta tell you guys i am absolutely thrilled with how this installation went there were a couple hiccups just from me learning the process of getting installed but i think on my jeep which we're about to do now it's going to be a heck of a lot easier now that we've already kind of worked out the quirks and the little tricks of putting this on a couple tips and tricks i would say and ryan can agree pop your seats out, it's four bolts, disconnect the battery, make sure that you let your Jeep completely go to sleep too, and then disconnect your harness and just pull them out. Ryan also pulled off his soft top windows so you can kind of reach over the side and get these side pieces in to fit a little bit better. I just think it's really cool that it's an entire replacement. Ryan chose this interesting color. What do you guys think? Leave it below in the comments. I think it's gonna go well with what we're planning with this Jeep, but let us know in the comments. I think this is gonna be great. Like, dude, if you spill your like, uh, what is that, like your macchiato, man? It's just gonna go right down those drain plugs. Either way, huge shout out to Armalay. Thank you guys so much for sending us two kits. This is the two door install. The four door installation will come out soon and you'll see how to do that on the 392. We also did do another thing. My, Ryan, maybe we ought to mention, we tried the power seats in your Jeep. Yeah. Uh, they don't work. So we put my 392 seat, we plugged it in and uh, no, it doesn't work. There's some things missing. Maybe if you have like a regular Rubicon with like some more plugs underneath there, but it, it didn't work yeah. at all. So if you guys want to check out Armorlite, we'll leave a link down below in the description. Just go on their website, tell them Dirt Road Cred sent you over there. I'm super happy with this. We're going to have to test it out. Maybe we'll have to do video number two. We'll test them out. We'll get them coated in sand, mud. Either way though, my name's Matt. That's Ryan behind the camera and we want you to get out there and earn yours.